This Veterans in Vehicles interview is sponsored by Rapid Recon. For more information, visit rapidrecon.com. How do you actually formulate a plan? How do you put a process in place? How do you make sure that everybody's working together and doing their job so they can help each other? Those were skills that I learned, uh, you know, being a leader in the Marine Corps that I don't think you can just figure out. Hi, everyone. This is Susan Givens, and we are bringing you another Dealer Insider. Today, we have Jonathan Henshaw. He is from Northern Colorado Power Sports, and that's a John Elway dealership. So this is a little different today. We, um, we normally interview like automotive dealerships, but there's such a connect between power sports and automotive right now. And, um, and even more importantly, Jonathan has served in the Marines and we want to talk to him a little bit about that. Jonathan, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks, Susan. It's awesome to be here. Well, thank you for joining us. And um, just tell me a little bit about yourself, your, your experience with the Marines and how you came into the automotive industry. Well, so I think just going through the Marines, I was, I probably wasn't the greatest teenager, so I needed some direction. So going into the Marines, it gave me direction, purpose, you know, built my character up. And when you come out of the Marines, you're kind of like, well, what now? You know, I, I, I wasn't a mechanic. I didn't have a lot of hard skills. And I saw an ad in the paper that was hiring car salesmen. So I gave it a shot. So, you know, 24 years old, not really knowing what I should be doing or what my skills actually are. And I found the car business when I was 24. And, and I worked in that business for a long time. I, I cut my teeth in the auto world. But the skills I learned from the Marines just doing doing the processes following orders if you will uh, those all helped me to really excel in auto i think the biggest thing was just having uh, pride in myself knowing i can do whatever i need to do and that helped me excel pretty quickly at first in the auto world that's awesome so i know you've taken some experience from the marines and you've you've applied it to your to your day-to-day -day. You, you've set up a veteran sales program can you tell me a little bit about that yeah so i think a lot of vets were similar to me you know you get out and you're not really sure what to do i, I was honorably medically discharged and so with some of my injuries a lot of jobs were just not an option for me so I hooked up with all of the local recruiters um, all, for all the branches and connected with the VA. And I, they just know that I'm, I'm looking for people that want to work. You know, I, I can teach anybody sales. Sales is not a born trait. It, it's a skill you learn. And so if, if I can just get somebody that's got some drive and wants to do a job in retail working with people, then, uh, then I can teach them. So we have a program where the recruiters, they usually will call me and say, hey, I've, I've got a, a younger guy that just needs direction. You know, he might be good lot tech or, hey, I've got a pretty mature guy. I've been in 10 years. He reached out to me, you know, looking for work. What do you have for him? So it's, it's really kind of an organic relationship. And, mm -hmm. you know, the VA, I actually have a salesperson that used to work at the VA and so he goes to the VA and, you know, we do donations or help or, or what have you. And so he brings uh, more candidates in that we can talk to. That's awesome. So it's been pretty successful. It's been extremely successful. We've been able to bring in uh, from the Navy. We brought in a kid who was honorably discharged medically, younger kid. He probably 22 years old. We hired him as a lot tech and he's now a service tech working his way into the 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 service world so he's really growing and one of my best actually my best salesman uh he was uh, 12 years in the army eight years working with the va got a family got kids didn't really know what to do wasn't able to hold a job anywhere else um, as all of us who've been deployed there might be some of the acronyms whether you call it ptsd or anxiousness or anxiety and this job has been able to just help him succeed without you know the the problems that would happen uh, in a normal environment it's probably been really helpful to be surrounded by peers too that have been through similar situations 
the, it really is, you know, these guys can really lean on each other. Um, we can all lean on each other. And sometimes you're having a bad day in sales. It's not the easiest job. So having the structure and the support for these guys, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. Awesome. So tell me about um, how you use your skills that you learned in the Marines in your day to day, you know, as, as far as maybe selling or training new people or hiring, you know, what, what did you learn in the Marines that you are applying into the dealership world now? Well, it's funny you mentioned training because that's 90% of it, right, is, is having a good training program. Uh, we, we have an onboarding program and it's just like you would be in the military. You know, it's step by step. Here's how we do the job. And so creating those processes that I learned how to do in the Marines, you know, how, how do you actually formulate a plan? How do you put a process in place? How do you make sure that everybody's working together and doing their job? So they can help each other. Those were skills that I learned, uh, you know, being a leader in the Marine Corps that I don't think you can just figure out, right? That that's a learned skill of how do you actually create a process. And and when I say process, a lot of people think it's it's simple. You know, uh, I I equate creating a process to making eggs, right? And most people would say, well, you know, you put eggs in a pan, you fry them up. I start with first you open the refrigerator door, right? Let's start at what you actually do. Open the door, pull the eggs out, heat up your pan, put butter in your pan, grab a knife to cut the butter, like all these little things that most people don't think about. And it's the little things that'll kill you in business. Those are the things that'll get you. So we create very detailed processes and that just makes everybody's job easier. And I don't think I'd be able to do that without the core. Right. Almost like a Kaizen plan. Um, yeah. How are, how are the automotive industry and the power sports industry similar? I know that right now in the automotive industry, we're having an inventory issue. And I think you guys are, are probably having the same, the same issue. Um, but overall, you've had positive outcomes in, in your industry too, correct? Absolutely. They're, they're very similar. Uh, I would say the same. You know, the big difference between power sports and auto, nobody needs a motorcycle. Nobody needs a four wheeler. No, you know, maybe a hunter. Uh, it's for fun. There's some government guys that might need things, but 90% of the folks buying power sports, it's not a need. It, it's a want. And so with that caveat, they really don't have to spend money with me today. You know, they, they can take their time. And so it becomes really important that we do a good walk around, land them on the right unit. And in that aspect, it is the same as selling auto. It's the same process. I think what, what makes it a little more difficult, you know, we, we deal with different margin levels. We deal with different products. And so it's hard to find folks that can deal, especially up here with the seasonality and some of the, the lighter weight deals, right? We sell dirt bikes for $3,000 or something like that, where your average car is 30 grand or 40 grand. So the amount of work, you know, I've got to sell a hundred units to kind of make it work rather than a car store that could probably sell 50 and make just as much. So in that aspect, it's a little more difficult, but the fun and the family atmosphere and the way we work in power sports in general, that is very different than cars. Cars is a little more high pressure, a little, a little more aggressive. And so that's the only caveat. That's the only difference is a little bit less pressure in power sports, but we all have inventory issues. We can't get parts. We can't get inventory. We we're pre-sold out of things up into 2023 right now, waiting on stuff. It's, it, it is the most unique situation I've ever seen. What are you guys doing to kind of overcome that and keep the customers happy that can't maybe get the products or the vehicles that they want? You've got to stay in touch with them. You know, you can't just take their deposit and call them when the unit gets here. That's a terrible idea. So that probably makes it a little more difficult. And I think in the auto world, they need to do the same thing. You got to stay in touch with them. You got to keep them excited. You've got to keep calling them, updating them on where the unit is, what's happening. Um, you can't 
just forget about it and go on to the next one. So in a way, you you kind of have to just coddle that customer until that unit gets here and keep them excited, keep them involved, uh, just keep them top of mind. Otherwise, you'll lose them. They'll just go somewhere else. For sure. I think that's great advice. Have, have you seen, um, you know, a positive on the used vehicles? I mean, are you guys getting used vehicles traded in or um, sold? Are you buying a bunch? No. No, they're, we, they're we don't get there. a lot of trade-ins. It's very similar to auto. Uh, it, one of the differences, auto has pretty good connectivity as far as finding units and using their tools to source new product. We're about 10 years behind the auto world. So that's a really manual process. Most of our pre-owned units that we're getting, my GSM is buying them out of service. Uh, he's calling Craigslist ads. He's just boots on the ground getting units here any way he can. Right, right. That's, that's crazy. Um, what advice can you give our audience to help better their career in the automotive power sports industries? So I, I love that question because I think there's a lost art of mentorship, you know, too often. And I saw it in the car business. We hire someone, kick them into the deep end. Hopefully they make it. You know, there's, there's very little mentorship. And so I think the biggest thing someone should do, no matter what industry you're in, find somebody that's at the level you want to be at. You know, if you're in sales and you want to be in finance or you're in finance and you want to move to the desk, Find somebody at that next level that you're trying to get to and put yourself under them. Learn all you can. Ask questions. Stay involved. Don't assume that you just, because of tenure, are going to get promoted, right? Like you've okay. got to show that you, you want to get somewhere and really put yourself under somebody. Get a mentor. Learn all you can. Ask the questions. Build your value and then you'll make it into wherever you're looking to go. That's great advice. Okay, I have one last question. What's your favorite vehicle to ride? <laughs> so I, I ride a Harley. Okay. I ride a okay. Harley. Yep, I, nice. I'm a Harley and guy. And being in Colorado, I, you probably don't get to ride it every day, right? <laughs> we ride daily. We, we ride every day. We're, we ride, we have heated gear. We got heated gloves. Everybody here rides. We probably 90% of us, uh, we do road racing. We do long trips, overnight trips. We are motorcycle maniacs here at, at NOCO. Nice, nice. Well, thank you so much, Jonathan, for taking the time to chat with us today. Thank you for your service. Um, we appreciate all the advice that you gave us and um, have a great afternoon. Yeah, thank you so much. It was a pleasure.